G'day guys, welcome back. I'm playing with my octopus again today. today. Hello octopus. Um, now, if you saw the other one I did, I did this gorgeous creature here with alcohol inks. But you don't have to just use alcohol inks with the octopus mold. I'm going to try today doing some, trying to get some sort of iridescent, sort of really pretty effects with cellophane. So i am kind of got the image of a jellyfish in my mind. And I know an octopus isn't anything like a jellyfish, but I'm going to go for that sort of transparent, translucent, shimmery kind of look like a jellyfish. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do today. I am using some cellophane. Now this particular cellophane, I've bought a few different cellophanes. This particular one, I think it's for nails. It comes in these strips and it's really quite thin. Um, I, I didn't know there was lots of different types of cellophane because there's that one and then there's this one. It was some party bags. I'm going to scrunch that up. It's a bit thicker, feels a bit different. And then there's, there's this one as well, which um, came on a big sheet, a big roll like this. And it's, um, it's got a, like a clear backing on it. It's much thicker. You can hear it. Um, but today, because I want to do like little thin pieces, I'm going to go with my thinnest one which is this one here um, so I've scrunched some up like that I've started cutting it up and then I thought I'll, I'll just cut a bit up and then I'll show you what I did so then what I did was I just sort of straightened them out and this is just what I did I just rolled it up like that And then just to make it easier to cut. So instead of cutting just in straight lines, so you get long strips, I'm sort of cutting on angles like this, like trying to get just little pieces. And I better do it close to the surface here because it's kind of flings out everywhere. And I've got it on a piece of baking paper so that I can then pick it up. And um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my resin and then I'm going to actually pour my flakes into the resin and mix them up so that they're all dispersed rather than pouring the resin in here into the mold and then trying to poke these in. I, I don't know. I'm just going to have a go, see which way it works better. So as you can see, I'm just cutting it in different angles like this. You can cut it however you want. You can make strips. You can just yeah, put a strip in, I guess. I will try that another time, actually just laying like a strip in there, but... I just thought I'll, for this first time, because I've never done this before, um, there you go. I've got my little, my little cellophane pieces. Some are longer than others. <laughs> Oops, I missed that one. <laughs> oh, gosh. Cut him up. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm also going to give it um, a little bit of a sparkle as well. So, over in my, my little stores there, I found all these other... I guess it's the same cellophane pieces. There's a little bag with it's already cut up for you, so you can buy it like that. I don't even know where I got this from. Um, but look, search eBay, search Amazon, wherever you normally search for your goods. Um, cellophane or holographic cellophane. And then there's this one as well. This is Silicon Molds Online. This came already chopped up. As you can see, it's like a blue and green together. That might look really pretty in an octopus as well. So I can see me doing lots of different octopi with different colours because that one would be really pretty as well. And then I've got a few from um, Lorez. These two are really pretty as well. This one is similar, I think, to what I've got here because I can see sort of pink and gold in it. Maybe this one's got a little bit more green in it. They all seem to be a little bit different. And then this one is a really pretty pale aqua with like little 
hints of purple and things like that in it. So that would look really pretty as well. Maybe mix the two together in an octopus. So I think I'll do that. <laughs> That'll be coming up soon. These two together in an octopus. But for today, I'm going to use these. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of this. Um, it's called Starlight Blue from Lares. Special Shimmer Effects Powder Pigment. Glitz and Glam. So I'm going to put a little bit of that into the resin just to help with a bit of a, a shimmer. I think that'll look really pretty. Like I don't want to change the colour, I still want to keep it nice and transparent but just a bit of an extra shimmer. So a <clears throat> lot to tell you. Um, I'm going to mix up my resin and um, I'll be back and we'll have a little play with this gorgeous octopus. Righto, I've got my resin. Now I mixed up just over 300 grams. It was 320 to be exact. So 10, 11 ounces. Right, and I'm using this one. The Platinum 360 Plus. This is just a little kit. There's A and B, but I've got big bottles, but they're down there on the floor. So I'm just showing you what they look like. Link to these is below. Um, they are selling them in the US. Um, you might just have to email them. I had someone who said they couldn't find where to buy, but I did put up the website. Uh, but yeah, you may just have to email them and they will tell you where to get them from. Right, let's put a little bit of this in. It's got like a, a blue... I think it's like an interference maybe or a, not sure exactly what it is but let's just put a little bit in and see what that looks like I've got it in an opened open mouth or wide mouth bowl here just so that I can mix it better with my little cellophanes and I can see what's going on so hopefully this works because I've never seen anyone like mix the cellophane into the resin and then pour I've only seen people pour resin in to their mold and then put the cellophane on and like poke it down so I'm, I'm sure I'm still gonna have to poke it down anyway look at that can you see that bluish purplish hue there so that's I think that's all I want I don't want to change the color like I said I just want to put a little bit of sparkle in there just a touch don't want it to be overbearing all right <laughs> I stirred it for four to five minutes. I always stir my resin for four minutes. If it's a lot of resin, I'll go five minutes, but generally just four. Okay, let's do this, you guys. See, I figured if I put it on the piece of baking paper, I can just do this with it. I thought, because if I put it on a piece of plastic, it's probably just going to stick to the plastic. And then I won't be able to get it out. So I'm hoping that this is enough. I guess I could quickly always cut up one more piece. I only got three pieces in the kit. I've got three pieces of one colour and three pieces of another colour. It doesn't look as if it's enough, does it? But then I always, I always underestimate or overestimate and have too much of what I need. So well, let's, just, let's just do that, eh? Okay, look at that. <laughs> now, how am I going to get it in there? Um, see, now I'm... <laughs> okay. Hmm. Paper cup. I might pour... I might do a little bit at a time and use my paper cup. That way I can... get pieces in where I want pieces to go. Let's put that there. All right, here we go, you guys. Make sure it's nice and clean. I did go through with some tape earlier and picked up little dots as I saw them. Okay, here we go. Let's pour in where there's a blob of cellophane. It kind of falls out in a big glob. 
I may have to go in afterwards and just sort of, if there's none in a certain, like no cellophane in a certain spot, whoops, I dripped down the side there, <laughs> then I might just have to go in and add a little bit more. Just getting a baby wipe out. Okay, see there's a big glob there. So I'll go through and just spread the globs out. Okay, that worked okay. Let's do some more. See some areas have got more cellophane than others, so I'll just, like I said, I'll just spread it out later. Once I've got all my resin in. There we go. If you're doing this from a little paper cup, just make sure you don't overfill your cup, otherwise it all tends to just run down the side. That little foot needs a bit more there. Some cellophane, so I'm just going slowly, make sure I don't overfill anything. And people are probably saying, well, what are you going to do with the octopus? Well, it's just a piece of art. Like you could hang it on your wall. So, you know, same as the other one that I did with the alcohol inks. You don't really do anything with it. It's, any, it's like anything that you make out of resin, you know. People make alphabets and things. Well, what do you do with those? You just stand them somewhere in a in a little girl's room or something, and on the bedside table, they just look pretty. So I've got a long piece there that I didn't trim up. So yeah, I'm just having a little play, seeing if I can get something pretty. Over here hasn't got any cellophane. I'll have to add some there. <clears throat> when I go out today, I'm going to go to the newsagents and see if I can actually find a roll of cellophane wrapping paper. Can't be that hard to find, surely. I don't think you've got to buy online. So I'll see what I can find. Almost full now, and I'm going to use. I've got this little, I've got these little sticks here. Sometimes the cotton wool falls off the top, and then I've just got a, like a little stick, which is I think really good to use for poking things. So I need a little bit more cellophane just in that one there. I can pinch a bit from there. All right, anyway, let me just fill it up, top it up. I don't think I need all of this, actually. Just want to make sure it's full. The table's nice and level, so I don't have a problem there got the level out before and made sure it was level. Normally I work on that side of the table just there, but I've got something else there that I've just poured. So I need to come onto my other side of the table, my other piece of wood, but I need to make sure it's level. Okay, so there we go. I think that's pretty full. Now I'm just going to kind of move my, my cellophane around. It just looks so pretty in here. It's catching all these different lights. Look at that. It looks on the black there. Oh, what if I put, I haven't got, I haven't got room now, but what if I put, um, I wonder what would happen if I put black over the top of it. I still could. I mean, I haven't got any room, but I would have to just, like, spray paint or something like that. No, 
We'll do this one today just like this and give it that really delicate look that I'm after. And then next time I'll only fill it like three quarters full and then I might put um, like some black resin over the over the top once it's set. Do another layer in black. What do you think? And then we can see what the difference is. Look at, because look at that. Look how that looks on the black. I've got a little bit of black on the tip there. Can you see that? That just looks amazing. Oh, now I want to put black on the top of it. That's just amazing. Just trying to pick out my hollow, <laughs> my holographic paper. Iridescent. I think it's iridescent. Look at that. So I don't need any more resin. I'm just picking out my little bits. All right, then I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Clean up my mess. So that's that's worked out pretty good. Um, let's give it a bit of a a quick torch. Not too close. Because you know these these molds. They're pretty thin. You don't want to get too much heat next to them, so that will be all. Um, I may actually just don't need that. Give it a bit of a spray with some alcohol. Actually, look at the mess I've made. Clean up my mess. These baby wipes are amazing when you're using resin. Hey, you can just wipe everything away. And I wipe out my stick and my bowl, and I use those again. Right, um, I'm just going to give it a bit of a spritz with some alcohol, just to help pop bubbles. Because like I said, you really don't want to be using heat on your mould, especially like when you, you know, it's very, it's got a lot of silicone there, so on the little edges, so very thin. So trying to get just the resin is tricky, you'll, you'll no doubt melt your silicone. Alright, that's it you guys. I hope it turns out pretty. So what I'll do is I'll unmold it. Um, actually, I'll take you down so you can have a little look at the shimmer. I'll unmold it, and then I'll see if it needs a black background or not. Look at that shimmer, shimmer. So we're getting like a blue on this side. And come around here and then we're picking up more like a green on this side but um yeah i think with the black background we'll really make it pop but let's see what the clear looks like first hey with this sparkle and um yeah i will see you uh, tomorrow for the unmolding hey guys i'm back same day, oh, it's about quarter to five in the afternoon, so um, I didn't take notice what time I actually poured this, but it hasn't been very long. Now I'm just going to go along and just pull from, pull from the bottom and just loosen these. Whoops. If I can, oh, there we go. <laughs> I just want to make sure I've loosened everything. So just giving it a little bit of a helping hand. You can pull from underneath or you can just loosen it before we pull the whole thing off. It's especially in like little areas like this. You just want to pull from behind like that and just loosen it this one here you can sort of push in like that push him down like so where else do we need to loosen just all the way around and these bits here as well you can push that like that and in here I just pull down like that to loosen that I wrote on the side how much I needed <laughs> it's on earth the next time these bits here again, how there's little bits of silicone in between. Just pull gently, work your way all the way around. 
And I think that's about it. Now we can just loosen him all the way. You don't want to break a little tentacle off, that's all. You just be careful. Just go slow. Loosen what you can first. And then come around and take him out. Just be really careful you don't break anything. And he's out! Look at that! Alrighty. So that's the back. Let's have a look at the front. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, look at him. Look at him shine. I need to take him outside. Wow, he's so pretty. Now this, towards this way here, that's with the light. It's with the light behind him. I don't know. I can't really see very well because I've got the light in my eyes this way. is back with the light on him. Look at that. Nice and close up. It's like an electric eel, hey? <laughs> how they have that bright colour. Oh my gosh, he's so pretty. I just don't know how to show you all the light. Now I'm going to have to put him back on my hand. Put the camera back on my hand for one sec. <laughs> Very hard to do these things one-handed. I'm going to drop the phone up now that I'm trying to put you on autofocus. Oh gosh, hang on. Look at my backyard for a sec. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Pop you on autofocus. Very hard to do this one-handed. All right. So this is in the shade on my deck. Still really pretty in the shade, hey. And then we go out here again with the sun. See, the sun's just setting, so it's not real good light. But you can catch all these different colours in him. I'm gonna have to come back in the morning and do it, aren't I? And the sun's all gone. The sun's all gone. <laughs> oh gosh. Left it a bit late to unmold. Never mind. There we go. You get the general idea, don't you? I wonder what it looks like in the shade. Oh, let's go up the stairs. Hopefully I don't fall up the stairs. Oh, up we go. Come with me. Let's see what he looks like in the... Oh, look at that. Does he look any different? Now we're in the shade. On my deck. At least I can see now. 